morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Angie Evans, Commander, Post 128, and the 7th District Vice Commander. On behalf of the Arden H. McKee American Legion, I would like to welcome you to our 5th Annual 9-11 Memorial Ceremony. Before we begin today's ceremony, please take a moment to silence all cell phones. At this time, Chaplain Tony Rinlet will begin the ceremony with a prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mankind, and judge over nations, we ask you to bless this national day of service and remembrance. We are gathered here to remember those no longer with us who have made the supreme sacrifice for the benefit of all free men everywhere. May we never fail to remember the awesome cost of the freedom that we enjoy. We ask your blessing upon this service, and as we depart, grant us your continuous fellowship that makes abiding peace. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Renlund. I would like to recognize a few of our special guests in attendance today. Please hold your applause until all guests have been recognized. Representing our law enforcement and first responder community is the Rice County Sheriff, Bryant Evans, the Sterling Chief of Police, Alan Adams, and his canine, Glenn. Police Officer Roger Atterbury. Lions PD, Sergeant Corey Ryan. Sean Britton, one of our EMTs. Sean Reamer, one of our paramedics. Brady Myers, another EMT. The Kansas Department Commander, Mary Krupko. The Kansas Department Vice Commander, Jeremy Ehart, and his wife, Christy. And the 7th District Commander, Mike Dury. Please give our distinguished guests a round of applause. At this time, the Sterling High School Band will play our national anthem, and the Lions Junior ROTC Cadets will raise the flag as directed by President Biden, the American flag will be flown at half staff in remembrance of the 9-11 tragedy. Please be seated. 
Thank you, Sterling High School Band and Lions Junior ROTC. <coughs> so this week we had a pretty cool exhibit at the American Legion. Um, it was called Remembering Our Fallen. And I really hope everyone had a chance to walk through that exhibit. We had about 350 uh, visitors that came through and it was a pretty moving experience. This was a, an exhibit that paid tribute to the brave men and women from the state of Kansas that made the ultimate sacrifice on the Horde of Terror. And um, if you didn't have a chance to see it, don't worry, there's still another chance. It's gonna be on the exhibit at the Kansas State Fair in the Pride of Kansas building. Um, we had a great response from the high school and uh, the junior high. They brought some of their kids through. And Mrs. Rowland's class of seventh and eighth graders actually wrote some reflection comments about coming through the memorial. And um, it's six pages, I promise I'm not gonna read all six pages, but I did read through some of them. Oh, I read through all of them, but I would like to read a few of them for you. And um, well, I have to say yesterday, I was sitting at my desk reading this and crying and praying that nobody was gonna walk into my office and ask me why I was sitting at my desk crying at work. I probably have to come up with some lame excuse, but it was very, very moving. Um, so I have a couple of them I would like to read for you. This one is written by a seventh grader. It says, after seeing the exhibit today, I realized that people so young and still having a lot of their life left for them to live, sacrificed their life so I could have mine. So all of us could live in a world where we don't have to worry about a thing or worry about being in danger. They fought to give us freedom and live in a good country, which may not, which not many people in the world get. And other people are suffering in their countries. I don't think many people realize how lucky we are to have a good environment in our country because they fought for us. My grandpa fought in the war in Vietnam. And we have a picture of him on our shelf and a flag and a frame to honor him. Their sacrifice means the most to me. They are people from everywhere in the country coming together just to make sure we grew up with a good life. If you don't think this is brave, then I don't know what is. We didn't just magically have a free country. These people had to fight and sacrifice their lives for it. I think it was a good thing to go today so everyone can realize what they do for us. I think it was a very good lesson, especially to see it in person. This is also from a seventh grader. The exhibit made me feel special because of the feeling of knowing that people are right now out there defending my freedom. And I've done nothing to deserve the right of being protected by these courageous men and women, but they still protect me. I personally don't know anyone who has served in the war against terror, but I sure as world respect them. Not just any ordinary man or woman can say, I will go fight a war for my country. And the people who do will probably be the most courageous person you met. And I respect them with my whole heart. This is from an eighth grader. I thought the whole experience was a good reminder that even when we don't know it, there are people in every branch of the military defending us and our freedoms as Americans as we speak and go about the daily routines of our lives. I hope that we never forget the lives, young and old, that were lost in the war on terror. And this is the last one, it's an eighth grader. These people risked their lives to protect us and ended up paying the ultimate price in giving their lives. Even though they are not here today, they are still so brave for what they did. Their sacrifices have kept us safe from terrorist groups here in the U.S. and also protected people in those countries. Like most, likely, or they most likely didn't know a single person in Afghanistan or Iraq, but they still went and fought for them. The amount of selflessness these soldiers had, had to have to do this and fight for people they didn't even know is so crazy to me. These men deserve every bit of respect and honor for what they did. I think that if this ex exhibit did not exist, no one would be aware of what they did for us. Then they are right in what they did for us and what they're doing right now. I know that for me personally, I knew that people had died in the war, but I had never seen their faces. When I saw all the faces, I realized just how serious and amazing what these people did. I just thought some of this was very profound that it came from seventh and eighth graders. And, and the perspective that they had after seeing the um, exhibit. I challenge each of you, if you haven't had a chance to see it, please go through the Pride of Kansas building and take a moment to uh, 
to honor the men and women from Kansas that made the ultimate sacrifice. We must remember even the smallest act of ser service, the simple act of kindness. In a way, it is a way to honor those we lost. When Americans lend a hand to one another, nothing is impossible. We are not about what happened on 9-11. We are about what happened on 9-12 and beyond. This morning, I have the distinct pleasure to introduce our guest speaker. In my opinion, he is the epitome of what an American represented after 9-11. Jeremy Ehart is currently serving as a department vice commander. He has served in various positions in his home post at Lyle Richel Post 68 in Hutchison, including longtime adjutant and commander for two terms. He continues staying active in Post 68 through the executive board. Jeremy has served 7th district as a member of the executive board, vice commander, and commander for two terms, and continues to serve on several committees. Jeremy is currently serving on the Department Legislative Council and serves as a membership committee chairperson for the department. He is also proud to represent Kansas on the National Security Council and a graduate of the 2019 National American Legion College. Jeremy earned his eligibility through his service in the United States Marine Corps, where he served in Before my grand grandfather passed away, I wish I had asked him more about his stories of December 7th, his stories of the Pacific Ocean of the war. But he never voluntarily talked about it. The only thing he did tell me was some of his best memories were when he served. Now, although nobody here was probably alive during the attack on Pearl Harbor, we all have visions from newspapers or television clips of what it must have been like that day. But when I mention the date of September 11, 2001, everyone here has a very vivid memory of their experience that day. 
And I do say vivid because most of us can remember just about every aspect of that day. For instance, my day started normal like everyone else's. My girlfriend, now my wife at the time, her and I took our took a day off of work that day. We'd both grown up in Hutchinson, been to the Kansas State Fair many, many times as we were growing up, just never together. And that day we planned on going to the fair together and doing a couple things, holding hands, sharing corn dogs. Uh, that morning I, I woke up early, as I always did, and as I still do, I turned on the TV and saw breaking news. Saw a plane that just flew into the North Tower. I had watched the news for just a few moments and went and woke up my girlfriend, my wife, and uh, asked her that you've been to the Twin Towers in New York City before, right? I said, yes. I said, well, a plane had just hit one of the towers. She said, on purpose? I said, I don't know. And she woke up with me and we went and sat in front of the television and we were still watching as the second plane flew into the South Tower. Now, until then, there was still debate about if it was an accident or not. And I remember looking at her and telling her that the U.S. was under attack after that second plane was hit. And after that, the two of us, like so many others that day, we were glued to our television sets. We were watching, praying for all those involved. We were still watching TV at 9.37 when the Pentagon was hit. And shortly thereafter, when they announced that another flight was hijacked, and they believed it was headed toward Washington, D.C., to either the White House or the Capitol building. I remember the mixed emotions when the fourth flight, Flight 93, crashed in a field in Pennsylvania. And like my grandfather before me, I felt compelled to join the military shortly after our nation was attacked. I joined the United States Marine Corps in April of 2002, and although my military career ended differently than I would have liked, like my grandfather, some of my best memories are from my service years. Uh, like I said, unfortunately, my grandfather's memories and stories of his service and December 7th may have perished with him. I will not let that happen, and neither should you. There is far too much to remember and far too many people to forget. I remember watching as the towers fell, as the clouds of dust and debris covered everything. I remember the firefighters and the police officers completely covered in dust, still doing their jobs, still caring for the people. And it's those images, those vivid Im images that I have, that everybody has, those images, those memories drove America. They drove America through a tragic and traumatic time those attacks on September 11th, they were meant to demoralize and destabilize the United States. They had the opposite effect, though. We all came together. We proved that not only are we the greatest country, but the strongest, too. And now, 20 years later, as we gather here and across the country, we are reminded that bravery and the self-sacrifice has always been the cornerstones of our great nation. Once again, we demonstrate our patriotism with pride and gratitude. And I'll close with this. There's a saying, and I'm, I'm not sure where it started. I don't know where it came from. But the saying goes, a soldier dies twice. Once, wherever he takes his last breath, and he dies again when he's forgotten. Of course, this saying is written and talks about a soldier dying on the battlefield. But I think this applies to all people, all the time. Now I carry my grandfather with me. I speak his name and I try and honor it and his memories the best I can. I wish I had more of his stories to pass on to my own child and eventually hopefully my grandchildren. But I will not make the same mistakes that he did by not speaking about my stories and memories. And neither should you. It's our duty, it's our responsibility, and it should be our honor to carry on the memories of those 2,996 people that died that day. So please pass along your stories. Let your children and your grandchildren know what you went through on September 11, 2001. 
allow your stories to be told for generations, and for generations will keep their memories alive. Thank you again for having me and allowing me to be part of this service. God bless and never forget. Thank you, Jeremy. At this time, the department commander, Mary Krupko, will lay a wreath in remembrance of the 3,000 individuals who perished on September 11th. On September 11, 2001, approximately 3,000 people died during the attacks on the World Trade Center. The Pentagon, American Flights 11, Flight 77, and United Flights 175 and Flight 93. Most of those who perished were civilians, except for 55 military members, 72 police officers, and 343 firefighters that were killed while responding to the terrorist attacks. Just like our own law enforcement and firefighters, these men and women were running to danger as everyone else was fleeing from it. The 9-11 attacks not only became the single deadliest terrorist attack in history, they were also the deadliest incident ever recorded for firefighters as well as law enforcement officers in the United States. I wanna read this poem and it's, I don't know who wrote it, um, it, you've seen it circulating Facebook, wherever, social media, those kind of places. But I think it's just very appropriate for us to remember what happened 20 years ago. On this day, 20 years ago, September 10th, 246 people went to sleep in preparation for their morning flights. 2,606 people went to sleep in preparation for work in the morning. 343 firefighters went to sleep in preparation for the morning shift. 72 police officers went to sleep in preparation for morning patrol. Eight paramedics went to sleep in preparation for the morning shift. None of them saw past 10 a.m. on September 11, 2001. In one single moment, life may never be the same. As you live and enjoy the breaths you take today and tonight before you go to sleep in preparation for your life tomorrow, kiss the ones you love, snuggle a little tighter, and never take one second of your life for granted. In remembrance of September 11th, please join us in a moment of silence. As a final tribute to all the patriots who died on September 11th and to honor the 20th anniversary, we will place forget-me-nots, forget-me-not flowers by the 20 flags. These flowers represent the thousands of lives lost during the ter terrorist attacks and how, as Americans, we should never forget the ultimate sacrifice made by these patriots. 
As the flowers are being laid, the thankful patriots will sing, We Remember. September 11, 2001, the lovely Tuesday had just begun. The sky was clear as far as the eye could see. We thought it just another day to live and work and love and play. We said we'd see you when the day was through. We remember that September. We remember, always remember. We saw the plane, heard its engines roar. North Tower was hit round the 93rd floor. Fire and paper and people fell from the sky. Stunned by what the TV showed, another plane, South Tower explodes. We prayed we'd see you when the day was through. We remember last September. We remember, always remember. The Pentagon and shanks fell through. Evil now darkened our skies once blue. You called to say I love you one last time. We tried to make some sense of it all. Those towers weren't supposed to fall. You were gone before the day was through. We remember that September. We remember. Always remember. The smoke slowly settled, the workers did search. Old glory was waving and full was the church. We rallied together to help our fellow man. We loved our neighbors, honored police. We sought the Lord for healing and peace. We'll miss you all until our days are through. We remember. song. Before we conclude today's ceremony, I would personally like to thank our local law enforcement, the Sterling Police Department, the Rice County EMS, the Sterling High School Band, and the Lions Junior ROTC Cadets for participating in today's ceremony. I would also like to take a moment to recognize a few key players that helped make this ceremony possible. Cassandra Stevens and her husband Mark, Clay Thomas, Deanna Wolf, and the city of Sterling for all their hard work they put in today to making today's ceremony so special. I challenge you to please remember the brave men and women in uniform who continue to defend our country against terrorism. On one of the worst days in America, 
we saw some of the bravest acts in American's history. We'll always honor the heroes of 9-11. We pledge that we will never forget their sacrifice. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for coming today and to participate. Like Jeremy said, we couldn't have asked for a better, a better, a beautiful, let me try that again, a beautiful day. Um, it's just actually absolutely gorgeous. This concludes our 9-11 Memorial Ceremony. Thank you again for participating. And I, again, I do challenge everyone to go out and see the uh, Remembering Our Fallen exhibit in the, the uh, Kansas Pride Building. Thank you.